Today we're going to do some baby back ribs on the Yoder Offset Smoker. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd. This is Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer, and we got a treat for you today. We haven't done ribs in a while, and today we're going to fire up the Yoder Loaded Wichita, and we're going to smoke two racks of baby back ribs. Guys, we're going to do it really simple. These aren't going to be some one bite wonder competition ribs. This is going to be backyard barbecue, real simple, really tasty, and your friends will think you're a master. So guys, it's going to be a really simple cook today, other than firing up the yoder and a little bit of fire management, which this isn't about that. It's about cooking these ribs. It's going to be cooked to tenderness. I'm going to go for color and feel, not necessarily temperature. Now, if I was though, I would be using this Grillaholics barbecue cooking thermometer, which is really awesome. It's got two parts to it, a base station and the part you can stick in your pocket and go back into your house, your garage, your car, you know, wherever. But that's what I would be using if I was cooking the temperature. Otherwise, I'm gonna just be using a toothpick probe for tenderness. Now, if you guys want to check one of these out for yourselves, I'm going to leave a link down in the description, guys, to that and a whole bunch of other awesome Grillaholics products. Go check it out. All right, guys, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get cracking. What we got here is what you would typically see in any uh, regular corner neighborhood market back ribs here. In fact, I don't need to do any kind of trimming on them, but if I was going to do some trimming, I think I would use this custom husk knife that Uncle Steve's gave me over the holidays. It's a beautiful knife, a little protector for the tip here. It's super sharp and uh, I'm almost afraid to use it, it's so beautiful. Um, it is super sharp, I really don't need to trim anything, but uh, I think on my next brisket, I'm gonna definitely whip this sucker out. So I'm gonna put this back before it hurts somebody. Look at that beautiful case and everything. Uncle Steve, you're a classy dude. I really appreciate it. Speaking of Uncle Steve, we're gonna be using his Lucky Shake. One stop shake right here, guys. I'm not even gonna use a smear. And I'm gonna go on really coarse with it so that I get a chance for that wonderful smoke to penetrate that rub because I really want that smoke flavor. I want the pork to speak for itself. But trust me, Uncle Steve's shake could definitely speak for themselves too. So it's gonna be a great combination. And guys, stick around, because later on I'm going to show you a secret ingredient. You don't want to miss this one. I'm not even going to bother taking off the membrane, guys. I'm just going to score it. So I think it's going to be just fine for what we're doing here. Just a few scorings. That's all you need. Guys, you know, this is basically preference. If you want to take it off, go for it. But uh, I've had pretty good luck with just scoring it. Not a big deal. All right, see? See how simple that was? All right, now we're going to take the shake. Now, guys, I have changed gloves. My right hand, I'm not touching the pork with, but uh, my left hand, I am. So let's go for it. Yeah, that's about all we need on the back. Again, I'm, I'm not gonna go too crazy on this rub. It, as fantastic as it tastes, it doesn't need a lot because I expect it to get lots of smoke. Okay. And guys, be sure to shake this up before you use it because it's got a lot of nice texture in there and a lot of, a lot of ingredients that you wanna make sure that are nice and mixed up. So you guys, that's all it needs right there. Done. The stuff from Uncle Steve's like shake will go a long way. Guys, you don't even need a giant one, but uh, this is really handy to have. I keep this around and when I refill with the larger, I just fill up the small one. To me, it's just feels better. All right, guys, we're out here by my Yoder. It's a loaded Wichita. I picked it up a few years ago, guys. I got a video of taking delivery of this beast and uh, I'll leave a link to that video up here. So guys, just to let you know the style of cooking I do. 
I'm not going to waste pretty valuable cooking wood, at least around here in central coastal California. It's hard to get really inexpensive cooking wood like, uh, you know, central Texas post oak if you're living in central Texas. That stuff's probably a dime a dozen. Out here, it's a little more tricky to get good cooking wood. So I'm going to use just a good lump charcoal. I got this cowboy charcoal, by the way, it's very highly rated. I know they put it together down in Mexico, but it's, it's hardwood. It's really good, burns good. So I use that to warm up my pit because this thick steel does take about an hour around here, especially on a day like today, kind of cloudy, threatening a little bit of rain and fog. It's maybe 60 degrees and it's the beginning of February. All right, so not a whole lot to explain here, guys. I'm gonna bring my pit up to 225. I'm gonna be using some hickory splits. No, I'm not gonna do gymnastics for you. These hickory splits, okay, they come in these really easy to use, perfectly squared off, well, almost perfectly squared off, little chunks that are very predictable, just the right size for this firebox. And I love the flavor. Once I know I got a nice rolling fire, nice clean smoke, blue smoke, I'm gonna go for 225. I'm gonna put the ribs here on the left side of my pit where it burns a lot better. Uh, the heat is a little bit more manageable than the little flare-ups I get closer to the firebox. And then I'm gonna make sure that that rub gets set up really nice. But if it starts to get dry and the edges start to get a little, almost like on the verge of burning, then I'm gonna spritz. I'm gonna use a diluted solution of uh, apple cider vinegar and water. No particular reason, except I really like the flavor and I want to make sure that that meat has a chance. This could be a pretty unforgiving environment for ribs and uh, that's, that's, that works for me every time. Then once it's got the color and the texture that I like and I'm going for a nice bark, if I can get it, it's a little harder with the hickory. And then when it feels like it's starting to droop a little bit, that bark is set up, it's not burning, then I'm gonna wrap it and that's when I'm gonna pull out that pork fat that I showed you earlier and I'm gonna do a little something with it. All right, guys, let's get busy. All right, guys, it's almost been two hours. I've only peeked at those ribs maybe one time. I try not to open up the main cooking chamber too often because it really kind of screws up the cook. But as you see here, I've got the uh, batter's box here going on. This Yoder has this little stand right here. And for, uh, for those of you guys that uh, may think it's not where you cook your beans, okay? It's a log warmer, all right? And it's really important on a smoker this size to preheat your logs like this. And uh, especially if you're like me that's left their wood out and got a little damp, it's a good way of drying them off too. Um, also, it's, uh, it was a struggle capturing that 225 to 250 range that I was looking for at the beginning. I didn't show it to you on video because I was kind of busy chasing those numbers. Once I was there uh, for this particular day's temperature and humidity, I found a different way of stacking these logs and to get that 225. And before I show you the ribs, how they look at two hours, let me show you how I'm doing the fire. Okay, so um, obviously this is the hickory and they're they're pretty hot guys and they're, they're getting nice and toasty. That's what you wanna do. That definitely helps. Now, some people put them in the cooking chamber. Um, I don't think that's a very wise thing to do because you find yourself always opening that thing. This particular loaded Wichita really likes them stacked in a manner that kind of, basically the way uh, Boy Scouts teach you, teach your kids how to do a fire, basically a square. So that's, that's what I mean by a square. And if something burns away, and now it looks like that. Um, I'm gonna add another log. Okay, but I'm always trying to go for a quad. Let's call it quad stack. And that's what this Yoder loaded Wichita really seems to like, at least in the humidity uh, and temperature zones that 
that we have here in this part of California. Now, also one thing about this Yoder, for me, it seems to like the door right about like that. Let's take a peek here. So again, two hours in. All right, not bad guys. Now the bark is actually starting to set up, at least the rub. Um, the rub's not flaking off. And again, I didn't use a lot of rub. I like the color, I like what it's doing. I'm gonna close this down. All right guys, there you go. That's a solid two hours in, mostly 225 to 245, 250 maybe, on that left, left side of that smoker there. The color's starting to look really nice. Doesn't look too dry right now, but I'm thinking about a half hour to hour and a half. I'm gonna check it again. And if it looks like the edges are starting to crisp up, then that's when I'm gonna use my water and apple cider vinegar mix to spritz. At that point, once you start spritzing, I'm gonna start maybe about every 20 to 30 minutes until I wrap. So anyway, guys, that's about it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and go on and see what Sassy's doing, and we'll see you when we wrap. All right, guys, these things have been cooking unwrapped for about four hours now. It's starting to get a little dark here. I've increased the temperature about 25 degrees or so. I've been spritzing it with a mixture of apple cider vinegar and water about every 20 minutes to kind of keep it from burning. I even rotated them, you know, I basically flipped them for sides and then long ways. And uh, I did that once, you know, it's not really uh, burning too bad, actually none at all, which I'm grateful for. So what I'm gonna do now is take that special ingredient I told you about, the pork fat right here. Now I warmed it up a little bit to uh, melt it and to make it more clarified. Now it's not completely clarified, um, and but watch what I'm gonna do for this. Okay, now these ribs are just, just starting to sag just a little bit. As you can see, um, the color's getting really nice, about the color I want. And so I'm gonna go ahead and Put these right here like this. Now, what I'm gonna do here is take a little bit of this pork fat and just right on over the top of it, just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna wrap, but I wanna go meat side down this time. Okay, down, up, down. down. There we go. Those up. There we go. This is how they're going back on, guys. All right, guys. Meat side down. Meat side down. All right, guys. There we go. Now, I'm going to crank up the temperature on this. Now, you could put it in your oven, crank up the temperature, use electricity instead of valuable smoking wood. But you know, I'm already over here. Might as well just continue to do it, burn up some extra wood. At this point, I'm just going for BTU. But uh, hey, for whatever it's worth, let's keep on chugging. I'm gonna go for just one more hour, guys. And then I'm gonna take them inside and I'm taking you with us. All right, guys, it's been about five and a half hours on the Yoder smoker, guys. We smoked these mostly hickory, a little bit of Texas post oak chunks. You might have seen me sneak some of that in there. And using nothing but this Uncle Steve shake, Lucky Shake. A little bit of spritz at the end, some pork fat. And uh, then we just wrapped it and cranked up the heat a little bit more. And uh, hey, let's let's unwrap it and check it out, guys. I'm not gonna wait any longer. Um, I'm just going to put one aside. Oh my God. Let me just tell you, that sucker is soft. And I'm just going to put that aside right there, guys. I'm going to open up this one. Look at that, guys. 
Ooh. Guys, I think that pork fat did its job, guys. Look at that. Oh my god. Ooh, look how juicy that is. Ooh, look at that, guys. Nice. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna push this off onto this cutting board. There we go. One thing that I didn't do, guys, is I didn't unwrap these and put them back on the smoker to kind of let some of that moisture get away or whatnot. Uh, I didn't sauce these. Guys, this is pure Uncle Steve's shake, pork tallow, smoke, and that's it, guys. These are probably the most honest, honest ribs you can find right now, guys. Came out really nice. Look at that. All right. It's got nice pullback, guys. Okay. Most, most of the time it was boned down. And so let me go ahead and just... Oops. Okay. There we go. Look at that, guys. That looks good, babe. Oh, yeah. Look at that, guys. All right, guys. That's a fat rib. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You ready to go? I'm you going to go for that? Yeah. Are you going to hold it? I'm not too good at this, guys. Mm. How's that taste, babe? Mm. Now, some of you guys think that uh, you mm. got to... When you take a bite of a rib, it, could, it should come off the bone cleanly. Well, it does. Ooh. Oh, well, I was going to show them the bite, babe. Oh. Well, there's a sassy bite. It's more like a sassy devouring. But uh, I've been waiting. Oh, my God, these are so good. Oh, man. This, oh, all right. Here we go. I'm going in. Mmm. Mmm, you know, there you go. Clean bite, guys. You know, yep, you can taste the Uncle Steve's shake just a little bit. But you know what? I wanted that pork to come through this time. I wanted that smoke to kind of take over a little bit more. And honestly, I wanted to be the rub to be more like second fiddle. And... No sauce at all, guys. I didn't glaze it. Uh, and this tastes great, guys. It, it tastes, you can taste the pork, guys, but I think it's got all those little... Perfect amount of seasoning, honey. Perfect amount of seasoning. And you know it's pork. Uh, it's not hidden by all this sweet uh, Dr. Pepper and stuff like that. These are backyard ribs, guys. Mm. That pork fat definitely made a big difference, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, juiciness... If you think water is going to make something juicy, you know, that's false, guys. Um, it's all about the fat, the rendering down. And try a little bit of tallow, beef tallow, and your, and your beef and uh, briskets and stuff. And try a little pork fat in your ribs. You'd be surprised, guys. Because the texture and when you're biting into that rib, you know, that, that little bit of slimy feel, slippery... Um, you know, that's the fat, guys, and that's what your brain thinks is moisture. Um, so try it out, guys. Go for it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to go ahead and go on and eat. <laughs> thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I hope you comment down below and tell us what you think about that. We'd love to hear from you. Sorry we couldn't share these ribs with you. Yeah, sorry. We just don't have enough. So we're just going to have to go eat ourselves. We're not enough for you. Oh, well, that sucks. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later.